Hello, I am Mary Beth Gattins, Managing Attorney with Gattins Law. Recently, on the Gattins blog, in a post entitled, Get It in Writing First, we discussed what constitutes a franchisee transfer and the need for franchise approval in the event of a transfer. Now, in this video, I want to discuss the standard steps required in the transfer process. Remember, all franchise agreements are a little different, so you'll want to read your franchise agreement. But here are the general requirements of a transfer. First, typically a franchise agreement will set out a list of conditions or requirements for transfer. These usually include such things as the franchisee is in compliance or not in default with the franchise agreement. The buyer or transferee meet the franchise current standards. Do they have sufficient money to buy and run the franchise? A condition may also be that the buyer or transferee complete the initial training program. The franchisee may be required to sign a general release where the franchisee agrees not to sue the franchisor for past deeds. Finally, a new franchise agreement may be required to be signed incident to the transfer. Two, there is usually a fee associated with transfers. Historically, transfer fees were a couple thousand dollars. However, more recently, under franchise agreements, the fee can be more substantial. Sometimes they range between 10 or 25 percent of the initial franchise fee the franchise agreement will set out the transfer fee to be charged. Third, under the majority but not all franchise agreements and not in all situations, the franchisor may have a first right of refusal. Per a first right of refusal, the franchisor may be given the right to step in the shoes of the buyer and purchase the franchise. So, a reading of the franchise agreement, again, is important to understand if the franchisor has a first right of refusal and under what conditions. Thank you for listening. This has been Mary Beth Gattins with Gattins Law. <music>